Hey, good morning. Back again, lessons of the week. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about a session um, that I had over the weekend, uh, which uh, I may have talked about before, but um, since it comes up again, I think it's worth uh, mentioning. And that's little dogs. Uh, I always say that little dogs ha are, have many more behavior problems than big dogs, and it's because we really don't treat them like big dogs. We treat them like uh, little babies or stuffed animals or accessories. I did a session with a little chihuahua, cutest thing I've ever seen, all dressed up in a nice little coat and sweater, which is not a, a bad thing as long as we take care of all the needs of a dog. And that's the important thing. Dogs will put up with whatever silliness that we want. Uh, they will put up with getting dressed up, they will put up with all of our affection and our babying, but only if their canine needs are met each and every day. And every day they start again. You know, you wake up the next day, we gotta satisfy those canine needs again. And if you don't, you have behavioral problems. And these little dogs, they get babied, they get coddled, and problems that come up are just, uh, you know, they're really not taken seriously because of their size or because they're so cute. And psychologically, it's all the same to the dog. The little Chihuahua doesn't know how big he is. Uh, and he needs the same structure and leadership that a big dog does. And that is the big problem with little dogs, is we give them a pass on a lot of things. And we forget that they're just as much, a chihuahua is just as much a dog as a mastiff. They're, they're the same. Psychologically, they're all the same inside their head. So we need to treat them the same in that respect. Um, obviously, little dogs have uh, you know physical characteristics and and limitations that we have to be careful of. But you know, up here, they're all the same and they need to be, you know, treated the same. So little dogs need just as much leadership and structure as big dogs. And this little chihuahua had none. It was allowed to do whatever it wanted and it was coddled and their, their discipline uh, was like, no, don't do that, don't do that. You know, the dog doesn't understand the words out of your mouth what they understand is your energy. So by saying, no, don't do that, you must be saying, good girl, please keep doing that. Because that's what the dog's getting, it's your energy that's important. It doesn't matter what you say. You know, that's why I don't say, that's why personally I don't, don't use a lot of verbal speech. Because dogs don't understand it. You know, they're, they don't understand English. They're speaking in a canine way, uh, which is non-verbal. So don't concentrate so much on your actual words that you're saying to them, but concentrate on how you're saying it, the energy you're projecting. You know, it should be, you know, a little bit more, more stern. If I'm going to tell a dog no, we, what I usually do is go eh, just that. It's simple. Um, telling the dog that you know what, I really don't approve of what you're doing right now. Um, but just because they're little, they shouldn't be enabled to do a lot of these behaviors. This dog was getting away with a lot, and it was uh, biting, biting at people, lunging at people. And they just they brushed it under the rug because he's, he's just so small. But as now all of a sudden they're 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 going to have a new baby, and now it's a big deal because that little dog now compared to a little baby, all of a sudden the dog got bigger. It's different when you know we have adults. It's not a big deal. So these problems, if they were addressed earlier, would be a lot easier to address. The dog is only a year old, so we can easily address this. And just in my limited time in being there. He responded to corrections and my leadership so well. I mean, this was a dog that was begging for structure. I mean, I came in very quickly. He initially started very assertively at me. I'm sorry, she, it's a female. She came at me like gangbusters. But just by being calm and confident, not being freaked out by her outbursts, um, and instead of enabling it, I very calmly and subtly just provided stability. Um, so, and within, I think, 30 seconds, they said that she was sitting next to me calmly. And they said, you know, she never calmed down that quickly. Just because I didn't enable the behavior. I really didn't know why. Most, mostly, I just ignored her. Um, and if she, as she advanced in me, barking and yelling, I just kind of moved towards her just slightly in her space. I never touched the dog at all. And her, her behavior was not enabled and not rewarded, so she gave it up. And all of a sudden, she was behaving really good. I mean, she relapsed here and there, depending on 
you know, if I made a sudden movement or something. But she came around so quickly and we took her for a walk where she normally uh, asserts herself and is uh, grumpy at all these other dogs and people, barks at everybody. And we were passing by people and dogs pretty easily. You know, there was a couple situations when people were coming into our space, which understandably the dog really wasn't comfortable with at this stage. But if the people were just stationary, we, we, we were advancing towards them slowly and I would achieve a calm state of mind and move forward, she was perfect. She was perfect with me. And she was enjoying the walk so much more rather than being all reactive. And all it was was leadership. And that the beauty of leadership is it can happen like that, but you have to believe it. And you have to come from a source of stability, not emotion. If that's my little baby, oh look, I need so to pick him up, it's so good. No, you can't come. That's an emotional state of mind. Your dog will never follow that. That's not stable. You can do that if you provide the stability first. Once you provide leadership, exercise, and structure, you can give all the affection you want because the canine needs of the dog have already been met. So make sure you're taking care of those needs first before you pour on the affection because the affection is just for us. Dogs like it, but they don't need it. So we got to take care of the canine needs first and structure, I'm telling you, dogs love it. They thrive on it. They're comforted by it. This little chihuahua was so relieved that I took over and it didn't have to worry about a thing. All it had to do was be a dog. And she was so much calmer and she just was sleeping next to me where normally she'd be barking her head off at strangers. Um, so if you have little dogs, please think about the way you do things. Uh, if Whenever your dog does any behavior and you're wondering if I should correct it, just think to yourself, if this was a 120 pound Mastiff, would I let this go? Because if the answer is no, maybe we need to do things a little differently because psychologically everything is the same to the dog. So keep that in mind. And if you have little dogs, provide that structure. They need just as much structure. And keep them on the ground. Stop picking them up. The dog's world is four on the floor. Uh, I, don't like, I hate to see all these little dogs being picked up and carried around like a serving tray. No, they're dogs. You can pick them up sometimes, but they have to get used to being in our world. And that's four on the floor as a dog, not as an accessory on the floor like a dog. I kick everyone, anyone who comes in my classes with a, with a little dog in their lap or in their hands, they're out. They gotta come in, the dog has to be on leash, walking like a dog. So let's treat them like dogs, let's give them the stability and structure they need, then pile on the affection. I'm not saying don't give them affection, they, we gotta give them that too, but just make sure we're doing everything in the right order. Okay? Alright, I'll see you next time. Take care.